Hi, this is Kevin Booth with SCP, and we're here with Tommy Chong at the Taft Federal Corrections Facility, and I hope you enjoy our little show. It's the same kind of lie that when, you know, years ago in the 50s, they used to have commercials telling how many doctors recommended smoking Lucky Strike cigarettes. Nine out of ten doctors recommend Lucky Strike cigarettes. You know, the Marlboro Man used to get on a horse and ride around with a, looking so cool with his Marlboro cigarettes. You know, in Hollywood today they got you know Sean Penn and the boys. You know, they smoke cigarette after cigarette after cigarette. You know, and you can see the cigarette smokers in the theaters going, "I need a cigarette." You know, uh, tobacco here in, in the prison is 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 the thing to do here. It's like a currency. Oh, it, it's not only not not so much a currency here. You know, the currency here is onions. <laughs> but but c cigarettes, yeah, yeah, you can't get onions. You're only allowed one onion a week. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. But, uh, but cigarettes, um, you know, it's addictive drugs. You know, it, it, they're legal. Talk about the death rate. The yeah. Of oh, the death rate is enormous. I mean, they show you cancer, and people will be watching the uh, the commercials smoking. They, they have to go get a cigarette. The, cig the cigarette, the the anti-cigarette smoking ads by William Morris make people want a cigarette. It's subliminal. How many people die every year from smoking pot? None. Can you, can you say that? No. Uh, yeah, they haven't recorded one death from marijuana. Not one. Not one. But mind you, on the other hand. There, there has been cases where people, there's one case in California, and I, I want to be fair, you know, just to show you that I'm not, you know, just talking out uh, on one side. But there was a girl in California, she, she stayed up all night partying, she, she was drinking, and she smoked a joint and drove and fell asleep at the wheel and, and went off the road and killed uh, a, 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 a worker and she got seven years or something like that in jail for it. And that's the only incident that I know of, you know. And so, so I tell people, hey, you know, if, you, if you're stoned, don't drive, you know. This is, it's that simple. Talk about the specific law that got you in here. The law? The specific law. The specific the ladies, law. Yeah. Well, this, the, the law that they arrested me on is a, is a statute that was uh, enacted it was put on, what they do, they're very sneaky about this. They'll get a, a popular law, and they're going to pass through Congress, and then they'll attach these riders on it, you know, that uh, I think this law was attached to the Megan law, you know, where you, you must inform uh, the sex offender thing. I'm not sure, but it was, it was similar to that. And they attach this paraphernalia law, which uh, says that you're not allowed to, to sell anything that looks like it could be smoked, be used for smoking pot, as determined by a government witness. And that includes alligator clips, roach clips, uh, small hand pipes, glass pipes, uh, uh, bongs, uh, bamboo, uh, glass, and on and on and on. And on. And, and, and the way it's worded is that, in other words, they don't want you smoking pot out of, they don't want you manufacturing or, or, or uh, selling over a state line, you know, to make it a federal offense. And what happens, uh, so it's not a state's, uh, they have that law, but they, they chose not to uh, enforce it. Well, talk about how they set up that, that sting operation, and, and I heard they kind of tricked you or entrapped you. Well, what they... Buying a phony buy and a beer. Well, yeah, well, what they did in my case, I, we had a factory in Gardena, California, and we were making these uh, bongs with my face on it. And uh, my son, who ran the company, wouldn't send, he'd been requested by, by people in Pennsylvania to send, to, to ship to them. And these were legitimate stores, and my son had to refuse, say, no, can't send them to you, you know because uh, they were warned. My son was warned that Pennsylvania, you know, would uh, prosecute. And so uh, they kept sending back, and the DEA had set up a phony uh, 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 glass company, you know, a head shop. Do you remember what the name of it was? Uh, nope. 
I don't know the name. I saw the tape on it. But I heard the tape where they, they said, no, we can't send it. We're not supposed to sell it to that to you. And they said, why? Said, well, you're unrestricted. You know, you're in a state we're not supposed to sell. And so what they did, they, I think, I got no proof, but I, I, again, I can be like the government. I can just say whatever I want to say. And they uh, stuck a, an agent in, in my company, a salesman, and they made the sale because the salesman was a brand new salesman and he disappeared. So, so we never saw him again. How many people did you have working for you? Uh, we had 30 people. What was the screening uh, process? Screening? Yeah, how did you screen your employees? Mm, you know, we weren't paranoid at all, you know, because we were totally legal. We just told them, you know, the salesman, you know, here's the places you don't, don't sell to, don't ship to. Do you remember who he was? No. Um, talk about the, uh, if you want to, the federal prosecutor, Mary Hufton. I don't know her. The prosecutor, Mary Huffton. Beth Buchanan. Uh, okay. I, 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 I never met her. I saw her in the last day in court. It was funny, you know, when they, I, I was arraigned on May 12th, and, I, and she had the assistant prosecutor there to take the arraignment. But my lawyer said, well, this looks bad because they don't usually send someone down from the, that level to arraign a guy for selling a pipe. You know, usually the local guy does it, and, and but so so we kind of knew that it was going to be a big deal. But I never met Mary Beth until uh, the last day, and then after I was sentenced, I I was talking to the DEA agent. I said, you know, what happened to this plea agreement? You know, we had, and he said, well, the judge, uh, you know, the judge disagreed with it. Is it. You know, not my job. You know, that in my hands. And then she she told me she said, well, you know, they do have. Uh, halfway houses in in your area, you know, you should check out the halfway house, knowing that uh, you know the federal line the guidelines, uh, you know, uh, disqualifies me from going into a halfway house any sooner than ten percent. Well, tell me how they all said that they had never seen a case like this on federal level. My lawyers? First, I guess. Yeah, it was well. No, no one's ever seen anybody. Uh, no, no, you know, I was the first to, you know, to be prosecuted on, on a federal level for, for that type of crime by the head of the uh, Justice Department, you know, Mary Beth Buchanan. But she's on, a, she's on a crusade, you know, with John Ashcroft, you know, they're on a crusade to rid America of, uh, of undesirable, they're after the porn industry now, and they're after the, uh, you know, the pot industry. You know, she was determined, they're determined to wipe the, the slate clean, you know, potheads. Um, um, do you think, is your arrest, do you think it sent a little chill through Hollywood? Or? No, you know, Hollywood, uh, I mean, you guys, got, you got guys like Fraser, you know, who votes for Bush. You know. Well, but I know a lot of guys like, you know, uh, Joe Rogan, host of Fear Factors, friend of mine. You know, he's an open pot smoker, and your case is scary. Well, no, I mean it's not just Hollywood. Huh? I mean, hey, well, not just Hollywood. I mean, you know, yeah, but I, but no, no, the chill, no. You know what it did? I'll tell you what it did. It, it made me feel like a black guy. You know, I mean, blacks have been telling us for years that, you know, driving while black—that's a crime in, in California. In Los Angeles, you know, there was a, a judge, a federal judge, that was pulled out of her car, threw on the pavement, face down, because she was black. And and we, and then what did Hollywood do about it? Nothing, you know. So so they arrest Tommy Chong, a pothead. What does Hollywood do about it? Nothing. Well, they talk about how the drug war is racially motivated. Racially motivated. Yeah, the drug war. I mean, it's it, it was it was the, the whole idea of making pot illegal was because of the Mexicans in the 30s and during the depression time they were coming across the border and, and, and Americas, Americans were out of work and so they they started trying to demonize the, the Hearst paper tried to demonize the Mexicans and so he, found, so he dug around and found out marijuana because it was a very cheap way of, for the for the workers, the, the you know the field workers, and that uh, to relax after a hard day of slaving in the fields for fifty six you know cents a day, they would light up a joint, and and at one time you know it was used as medicine, 
in, in America, and it was encouraged to grow, you know, during the 40s uh, for rope. And they, there's a huge hemp industry here. And out of that hemp industry, there was uh, it was used by the in indigenous people as uh, medicine. And uh, black people from Africa, uh, you know, the slaves and and that they they knew about it. Here's a here's a herb that grows freely in in, in the fields, and they would pick that and they smoke it. And then Hearst her, Paper, again, wrote these sensational racist uh, articles about, uh, and and it was picked up by the by Ansinger, the first drug czar, and he he turned it in. It's on the record, where they're saying pot made uh, black musician black jazz musicians horny for white women, which is totally true. Why do you think they uh, decided to make an example out of you? They made an example out of me because I'm Chong of Cheech and Chong, because I I was on the radio. I command a lot of uh, there's a, I got a lot of fans, and uh, and and I'm I, I hit it at that age group where they want you know to join the army to go over and kill people, and uh, and potheads make lousy uh, for the most part they make lousy recruits, you know. But, but there, there's a lot of good army men that, that you know, indulge in pot, you know, a lot of killers. There's a, one in here, you know, that was a, a ranger, and he, he smoked pot and smuggled it, too. You know. got, I got some great stories in here. Um, talk about what, what John Ashcroft's operation has done to you and your family. Well, it disrupted my life. You know, I was going along, I was making close to a quarter of a million dollars a year just doing uh, stand-up. So that, that income was taken off my life. I, I made some good money with the 70s show, that 70s show. That, that, that was eliminated. I lost a couple of movies. You know, all in all, I lost, you know, maybe, and then the business itself. I, I, I'm down about $5 million, you know, thanks to, uh, to this war on drugs, you know. And, um, but I'll make it up. But it's not about money for me anymore. And, and everything that's happened to me has been very positive, and, and I've, I've got myself realigned spiritually. And, uh, you know, I've discovered uh, a lot of qualities about myself and about, uh, you know, especially my age, you know. Even though I'll, I'll still be doing the Cheech and Chong movies, I'm going to be very active in, in, uh, in helping people, you know. Like, I know how to the proper way to approach kids to keep them from becoming potheads, you know, at least the ones that shouldn't be. You know, there, there, are, there are certain segments of our society that will do whatever they're going to do regardless of what you do, but there's also a, a big herd of sheep out there that need to be led, and I know the proper way to do it, you know, because I don't think that, that pot is good for, for kids. You know, I don't think smoking anything is good for kids, period. And I think kids need a direction, and, and not only kids, but uh, young adults, you know. Like my son, for instance, you know. When he was, had the pipe company, he was just on the pipe making money, you know. But the minute I got busted, he went back to school, and he, he's enjoying this, this uh, vast uh, sea of knowledge and opportunity that he, that he, he shut away before, you know. How do you think <clears throat> them doing this to you is going to actually in the long run kind of backfire on the government? Well, they put a writer in jail. I'm a writer, and I remember things. And uh, just like Up in Smoke has been around for 20 years, I imagine this next movie will be around for even longer. And I imagine that uh, the stories that I've gotten in here and, the, and my outlook, you know, I mean, this, the sobering stories, you know, the, the, the kind of corruption that, that, that is going on in society, total corruption, you know, and it is going to be exposed and I'm going to be at least, I'm going to do my best to make people aware of what the threats really are. Tell me about the, uh, the prosecutors like convincing your lawyer for you to kind of keep your mouth shut before all this happened, or you could have like gone on to like more talk shows, been on the cover of a bunch of magazines, instead of kept, kind of kept a lid on it, and maybe that wasn't the right thing. Well, I think what happened, I think that was the difference. The most they could give me was a year, okay? <laughs> Had I run my mouth, I would have got a year in prison. 
but by by keeping quiet, they had to give me you know the nine months. Uh, I I decided, you know that there's a time and place, you know because people don't if if you talk you know it's like crying wolf you know like Nader like Ralph Nader everything Nader says is is true and right and all that but people get tired of listening to him because it does no good. You know, so I, I think I do more good with comedy and, and, and doing movies where, where you can let people know what's going on and, 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 and laugh at it. And me be an example, you know, me taking advantage of, of my time in here, you know. And uh, I think that says more for me and for what I represent, you know. I represent that culture, that beautiful hippie culture. And they're, they're, it's not, I never started them. I'm just a, a segment, a tiny segment of them. You know, there's millions of us out there. You know, but we're not violent. You know, and if there's going to be any kind of violence involved, we'll disappear. You know, we fade away. We don't want confrontation. Well, we don't talk want about the, how the drug war basically puts a lot of nonviolent people in jail and, and a, lot, a lot of violent people. Around. Well, they do. Uh, the the drug war. They, they purposely look for, it's like they recruit nonviolent people. That's why this plot thing is perfect. The, we got the, some of the best gardens I've ever seen in California, in horticulture there, thanks to the pot growers. You know, there's so many pot growers, they know how to grow plants. Pot's just another plant. We got compost heaps, we got every kind of vegetable. I mean, it's a paradise out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Um, what do you think the significance it was of them locking you up on September 11th? Well, it was very obvious. September 11th, you know, was the 9/11 uh, uh, date, and uh, the judge was all prepared for a big demonstration. He he had uh, me sentenced in in this big, bigger courtroom. He said that his was being under repair, but uh, you know that turned out to be a lie. You know. They they were expecting you know they were expecting you know, all sorts of demonstrators and everything else, but uh, no one showed. <laughs> one guy with a sign, one one guy with a cardboard sign, you know, free pot. <laughs> well, um, um, what was the comment you made? Something about terrorism that that got some officers really mad at you? Yeah. No, I said that the only the sad thing about this whole thing was that the only about the war in Iraq were the only. Weapons of mass destruction they found so far were my bongs. Um, okay, tie tie the, the Bush administration's uh, drug war back to the '60s and Nixon's drug war. Wasn't it? The parallels are, are, are so 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 similar. They they were both used as. Uh, you say their names? Well, well, President Nixon and, and President Bush. They, they're, they're similar in, in their approach. Well, first of all, Nixon, we all know what happened to Nixon, Nixon's history, but we all know that, uh, that uh, he used the demonstrators to, to divert uh, attention from his, uh, his illegal bombing of Cambodia. And, uh, you know, that crowded the headlines, you know, dangerous hippies and blah, 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 you know, running amok. And so Nixon used that the same way the Bush administration tried to use uh, the war on drugs, you know, to fund their, the, the war and to uh, divert attention, media attention, from, from the, the Iraqi conflicts, you know. And the Iraqi invasion, it's not even a war, it's an invasion, you know, an occupation, you know, pure and simple. Your, uh, your daughter, Pressure, Pre Precious, uh, was quoted saying that you guys never used to lock your doors at night, and now you do. Um, are you more threatened by bad people out there or the fact that we got a okay, global police state? Well, we obviously have a police state. I mean, and, uh, and, and I don't know, uh, I think, I'm really thinking of going back to Canada. Well, if uh, if Bush gets reelected, I definitely will be going back to Canada. I think Canada is going to be overflowing if Bush gets reelected. What about the fact that that it's coming out that Kerry and Bush are both like fraternity brothers or cousins? They're trying to they're trying to discredit Kerry. They're trying their best to discredit Kerry. You see, the problem is here, folks, is that if Bush doesn't get reelected, there's a lot of people are facing indictments. 
There's a lot of legal stuff that's going to be uncovered, and there's a lot of people that are very, very frightened for their empires too, you know, because he 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 dismantled, uh, you know, the conflict of interest. Uh, you know, you can have as many TV stations as you want. You can own anything you want, and uh, and if they were to, they're trying to discredit Senator Kerry who, in my estimation, should be the next president, simply because he wants a job. One of the things he talked bad about him, they said that he's always wanted to be president. Like, that's a bad thing? As opposed to a Bush who never wanted to be president. He just wanted to be a playboy and own a major league baseball team, you know, sit in the owner's box and party. You know, and now we got a guy, Senator Kerry, who wants to be president. And as far as him joining that club, don't hold that against him, man. Just because there's, you know, one nut in that that whole apple, you know, I mean that whole barrel. Uh, I see Senator Kerry as being uh, the next uh, Bill Clinton, as far as prosperity and see. The problem with the Bush administration is that they don't listen. They don't listen to their own advisors. They have these high-priced experts there telling them, but they don't want to hear it. They just have their own agenda that they want to accomplish. And, and what happens with the Republicans, they get in, they know they're only going to be in for one term. And so they rip and tear and they do everything they can, uh, you appoint as many judges and everything else as they can to, 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 to solidify uh, their hold on, on, on anything, you know, keep anything from being passed and then they wait uh, uh, four or eight years for the Democrats to build up the you know the surplus and the, to calm everything in the world uh, you know get everything working right again and then they come in because the American people are lethargic you know we're like uh, you know like Clinton got to be old news you know and we didn't appreciate him Um, well, what about the fact that, you know, everybody thought Clinton was this great guy, but meanwhile, this drug czar, Barry McCaffrey, that he hired was pretty much a nightmare. I mean, this, this guy went out and kicked him. I mean, I know nothing happened to you back then, but uh, Barry McCaffrey, the drug czar, Clinton was... Well, he, 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 he had a, to... to, to the, there's only things... There's only certain things Clinton could do. You know, Bill Clinton, only certain things that uh, Carter could do. Carter, here, Carter was a, a pro pot. Uh, advocate, you know, but you you can't get past the big business. You know, you're up against the pharmaceutical companies, you're up against the beer companies, you're up against the uh, uh, the health, uh, the medical profession. You're up against uh, too many too many people making money. The pharmaceutical companies alone, you know, are, are scared to death of pot being legal. Tell me, like, what all BS drugs would like go up, go out of business if, if marijuana became legal? Well. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I have no idea. You know, but I know they're they're they're, they're trying like crazy to come up with a, a decent uh, sleeping pill that's not addictive. You know, and and they're trying like crazy to come up with pills to help with chemotherapy and HIV. I mean, these are serious illnesses. You know, cancer, AIDS. You know, and they still all this cancer research. They haven't come up with anything. That right. even compares to to what marijuana does, you know. Um. See, see what marijuana does. It makes you hungry. It makes you eat. It makes you want to eat. You get the munchies, and that's what AIDS people. Any any sick person, you, a doctor will tell you. You know, this guy's not getting nutrition. He's not getting uh, food. You know, and there's nothing on the market that. Look at the crap they sell on the market now. Look at the fast foods. You know, that stuff's killing you. That'll kill you, you know. All that, ooh, all the salt and all that sugar and all that crap, you know, why preservatives and all that. Why won't the drug war ever work? Because it's illegal. It's immoral. It's illegal. Any war is immoral. War is immoral. War, killing anybody for any reason, is wrong. You know? Even in self defense. Um. <clears throat>
said something about Rush Limbaugh. Do you think Rush Limbaugh belongs behind bars? Or? No, I, Rush Limbaugh, as far as I'm concerned, he's he's a victim. He's a victim of this uh, of the drug war, because he, he got hurt. He, you know, he hurt his back or whatever pain. He went through an operation. I don't know what what his problem was. And what do they do? They 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 put him on pain pills. And what happened? He got addicted to them. He got addicted to oxycotton, which is like heroin. Apparently, it's harder to get off than heroin. And he got so addicted that he had to go illegal. You know, he had to st get six different prescriptions from different doctors, which is illegal. Which a lot of people are, are in jail right in, in here for doing the same thing. But because he's Rush Limbaugh, because he's the voice of the right-wing conservative America, they're keeping him out of jail. Just like Enron, just like all these other people. But Rush, personally, I, 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 I have compassion for him, and I feel sorry for him. And I would like to turn him on to pot, you know, if he needs something to, to, to mellow out, you know. St smoke a joint, Rush. That's, what I, that's, that, that's my prescription to you. Um, what do you want people to know about the drug war and how we could end it? How we can end the drug war? Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> no more drug war. Or move to Canada. I think that's the best. I think we should, that's what we should do. Let's everybody that disagrees with, the, with this administration, let's just move to Canada. Let's take, our, let's take our culture up to Canada. Okay, but tell me how the drug war affects people that don't do drugs. Well, I, 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 would, right, I would like to take this moment right now to thank the American people for the wonderful nine-month vacation, courtesy of you, the taxpayer, has been, uh, you know, granted me, and, and, uh, and I'm just one of millions of people that are here because of uh, the drug war, and your taxes are paying for it. You're, they're taking money from schools, taking money from uh, health uh, people, from old people, from uh, special projects, ghetto projects, money's being diverted into the prisons to keep these prisons, these factories working, you know, to keep that drug war facade going. So, the American public, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, when you get out, I mean, how outspoken are you going to be? Well, you're not going to be able to shut me up once I get out. Once I get on the radio, once I get on, you know, in the movies, you know, because I learned so much in here. I've learned uh, how illegal, you know, the the prosecutions and the, and the judges and the, there's so many case after case after case. There must be hundreds of cases just in here alone. And I I shudder to think of how many would be out there. This is one of what? How many prisons are there in America? Thousands of them, and there are more being built. Well, on that line, then tell me what you think about the privatized prison system. The privatized, well, I, see, I've only been in the privatized prison system, so I have no way of knowing the other way. Actually, uh, the privatized prison system, for me, you know, it's a pretty nice camp. They run a beautiful camp here. I had a, 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 a LAP a narcotics officer was telling me that um, they had a, a website with numbers that actually changed, and it always showed at any given time how many inmates were in the privatized prison system, yeah. and the, the stock value fluctuated Oh sure. Oh yeah, it's it's big. Uh, the privatized prison business is is big. It's a slave labor market. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, they get it from from all ends. You know, it it provides employment for depressed rural areas. So so you get a place like Taft. You know, if it wasn't for the prison, there would be no there would be no industry here. You know, the oil industry is gone, long gone. There's nothing else here. You know, except the, maybe the ground squirrel industry. That's it. Did you ever hear about the Talia case? The what? The Talia case. Did you ever hear about it? Talia? Talia? Yeah, it was a little small town in, in uh, Texas where some. Uh, oh yeah, where, where where one rogue uh, uh, narcotic cop uh, just got him did the whole town in. Yeah, and he was getting, actually getting kickbacks from private prison system <coughs> by how many people. He could well, I didn't know he was getting the kickbacks from. That's the story. Oh no, there's a lot of horror stories. One of my favorite horror stories is uh, the DEA busted three illegals. Uh, they weren't illegals, they were day workers going to Home Depot 
they're working uh, every day, you know, Home Depot, standing out in front of Home Depot, waiting for, and so what they did, these DEA agents went down, picked them up, and, uh, and dressed them up, got to close for them and everything, gave them a bag of coke and busted them and put them in jail for, I think they each got 20 years, and, and they didn't speak English, they didn't know what they were being charged with, they just put in the system, and they st spent a couple of years in jail before, I think, th someone wrote a book about them and got them out. Well, with a few minutes left, um, <coughs> openly talk about um, your feelings of the hypocrisy of the drug war. Well, the hypocrisy of the drug war it goes beyond just pure hypocrisy. It, 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 it goes into criminal. It's criminal. The drug war is criminal. It's it's taken away all our rights. It's it's turned America into a, a, a police state. It's turned America into a, a, a place where they imprison uh, people for, for for no crime, no crimes uh, at all against humanity. There are there there's a blind guy in jail here. There's a 78 year old man in jail here. There's there's old people, there's people with, uh, with health problems. Uh, a guy died in jail here from lack of uh, medical attention. And, uh, and, and in America, you just sit there and, and watch the news and, and eat your Ben and Jerry's ice cream and change the channel when, when it gets uh, uncomfortable. But the truth is, you're next. Don't don't sit there and think that it's not going to touch you because it's going to touch you if it hasn't already. Somebody out there is going to turn you in because that's the way it's being done now. Because you're going to save their butt, they're going to turn you in. And in order to save your butt, you're going to turn somebody else in until this prison is just filled with workers. And there's no end in sight. Not with this administration. So you better start thinking very seriously about who you're going to vote for in this next election, because it could be <laughs> the difference between you being on the street or being in jail, like I am. Can you give me one more plug where you like address the camera and you could say, uh, I'm, "I'm Tommy Chong, I'm teaching Chong right now. I'm sitting here." Okay. Hi, I'm Tommy Chong, teaching Chong, and I'm in jail, and I'm due to get out and few days and I'll be back and I'll be um, appearing somewhere in the, your local comedy club or movie theater very shortly so watch for me. Can you do one more and then you say the war on drugs somewhere in there? Okay. Hi, I'm Tommy Chong, Chi Chin Chong and uh, we're discussing in a very civil manner. Uh, we're, we're sitting here in jail discussing the war on drugs of which I am one of the victims. Well, are we out of time? Are we We're like four minutes, four minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to know more about the political prisoner aspect. Yeah, if you want to go on me about the political prisoner. Yeah, me being a political prisoner? Yeah. Well, you just look at what's happening to, uh, to Howard Stern. Uh, Howard starts speaking out in, on my behalf, and then next thing you know, he's being attacked by the uh, FCC uh, and uh, a relative of Colin Powell, I believe. His son is the head of FCC. It's funny how these relatives get in the, into power when Daddy's in there. Tell me about what you what you think about um, um, what's happened. I'm sorry to switch the subject. This made me think of something about. Since we've had started the war in Iraq or in Afghanistan, the, the opium production has skyrocketed since the madness. Oh, there again, you know. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, the Taliban, even though they were, uh, you know, tough on their own people, especially the women, they stopped all. It was it was a DEA's dream. You would think that they stopped. Total, totally stopped the opium production in Afghanistan. There was no uh, opium, no heroin being grown in Afghanistan. But as soon as the Americans bombed and t got rid of the Taliban and, and installed the uh, Afghani government, magically those uh, 
it's a more production in opium and, and poppies and than ever before. It's got to tell you something. Tell, I talk, get, tell me about how, like, if you study world history, you could see like this the flow of like the fact we're running out of oil and the flow of oil and wars and, and the war on drugs and drug production all kind of follows this trail of Halliburton. And oh yeah, well, I mean, you'll have to do that. I, I'm I, I'm not really that familiar, but when you think about it, well, look in history, the, the British. Uh, remember, the Boxer War was about the British forcing China to accept their opium that they grew in Afghanistan and everywhere else, that, that, that they had all of China addicted. And, and the Boxer War was fought because the Britain, British wanted to keep that, that uh, commer commerce alive. And so that, this is the, 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 the white man trying to enslave the Chinese man uh, on opium. And, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, when you look at the, the makeup in, in, in the prisons, you know, mostly brown, mostly, uh, you know, uh, either uh, Chicanos or, or blacks, you know, and hippies, basically, that's it, and old doctors in here. But it's, it's, uh, it's a insidious cycle that we got going here, you know, the war on drugs, the war on drugs. It's uh, the only way these guys can get funded. They're making money off it. And, and that's just legal forfeitures. There's so much money that, that's being just grabbed and dope. You know, I've talked to guys in here where they've been arrested and, and, and they've been arrested for, for uh, you know, in court it comes to like 20 kilos. And the guy says, well, I'm sure I had 100 kilos. And then the judge, uh, the, the lawyer would say, well, do you want to tell the judge that there was more? You get sentenced to more. What happened to that 80 kilos? War on drugs. You have to fund it somehow. Tell me again how you can end the war on drugs, just more than just saying no. To end the war on drugs, well, you have to, first of all, you have to change the, the you have to start enforcing laws against perjury, uh, laws against uh, intimidating witnesses. You got to enforce the laws, the rights of the American people. The rights to, to do, as uh, long as you don't hurt anybody, the right to, to pursue the pursuit of happiness and to start classifying these drugs as what they really are. You don't put marijuana in with heroin. It, there's no connection, not, not even in your own literature, in jail here, is there a connection between marijuana and heroin? There is none. There's no gateway. I mean, you can say all you want. A gateway, you want to know what a gateway drug is? Alcohol. Alcohol is the biggest gateway drug there is to anything to car accidents, to death, to everything, and that's legal. Cigarette smoking leaves more people dead with lung cancer and, and respiratory diseases than, than anything. Marijuana, zero, okay? End the war on drugs, legalize marijuana. Legalize it, tax it, do whatever you want to do with it, but don't put, and open the jails. Get, let these people free, let them go home. Let them go home to their farms and to their, to their homes and to their professions and, and let, let them have a life, you know. Forget this war on drugs. And, and, and you warriors on the war on drugs, all you DEA agents, get a real job. Get a job where you don't bust in people's homes without probable cause, where you don't throw people on the ground and arrest people in wheelchairs and, and arrest sick people trying to grow pot for, for other sick people. Leave them alone. Let them live their life. Let them live in America. You know, want to end the war on drugs? Get a brain. Tommy John, do I have your permission to use this for my video? You have my permission to use this for your video. Well, let me just get myself one camera next to you. Okay, this is uh, the guy that's been talking okay, to me. All right, now. Okay. Right. Am I free to go now? Nope. Get out of here. Thank you. 